right, we're doing this. Welcome to What the Fick, everybody. I'm Spencer. This other guy with me is Ian Cully. He's, of course, the head of Fick. That is Fixed Income Currencies and Commodities at All Star Charts. Mr. Cully, how are we doing? Excellent. Happy Friday, everybody. Happy Friday, indeed. Your hair is looking glorious as ever, but we're not here to talk about that. We're here to talk about uh, today. Really, the theme is more of just a roundup. We're talking a little bit of Forex, forex a little bit of commodities. We got a little bit of this, a little bit of that. So why don't I just give you the floor, man, and just uh, just sort of have at it. Where are we starting off today? Well, you know, um, I wanted to 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 catch up on a couple of charts uh, that were requested at the end of uh, Wednesday's show. Uh, yeah, that's right. The, the yen and uh, the Canadian dollar. So just a right. quick look at the the dollar yen. It's holding above uh, a key level from last fall. Pivot highs from last fall or the close uh, from last fall around one fifty uh, fifteen. Um, that's that's acting as support. I think a near term resistance is up around one fifty two. I uh, just want to point out the lower bounds of uh, of the uh, chart. We have a fourteen day RSI. That's uh, a momentum indicator I like to use. 14 periods uh, is, 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 is generally what I like to use as well for daily charts. Uh, uh, and what we got here is uh, waning uh, momentum uh, since the summer. We have a, a significant uh, bearish divergence. So something to keep in mind as price kind of just coils here within this tight range. You know, mentioned uh, a week or two ago when it when it started to move above that 150 level. Like, hey, you know, maybe the dollar yen runs it all the way back to those those key pivot lows from the 70s, up around 175. Possibly, possibly. Uh, Got to see it first. Got to see above 152 for uh, first. Um, but I also wanted to point out that these are some some pretty big levels that the the yen is running into. Uh, Bank of Japan has already come out and uh, indicated that it's willing to let you know rates potentially run higher. Um, what? No yeah. way. Yeah, I mean, I mean, wait, it, wait, it you, went you, from you, a quarter, you mean a, above, quarter a, a quarter point to wait. a full point, right? Uh, Isn't that the ceiling now for for the benchmark ten year yield is 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 one percent? Oh 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 yeah, you know yeah that's right. They said that the confused like a month or so ago or more. Um, yeah, and that's when we talked yeah, about this. Okay. Yeah, so okay, I'm just getting okay. back to hey, okay. you know they're 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 willing to to step in and 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 uh, defend their currency. Um, and well, we rates back, aren't aren't rates they're, they're still negative, but they've said they'll let them go as high as one percent. Right, that's what they said. I don't know if the ten year is still negative. Um, um, but okay. the, looking at, looking at the, 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 the chart here that when we go back to, you know, the, the nineties, you had that big, uh, that big, uh, uh, rally for the yen, uh, reaching its all time high, uh, I believe in 95. So from 1990 to 1995, the dollar yen, uh, uh, pair was cut in half, um, so I think it was, was it 1985 when, when the world came together and was like, hey, the U.S. dollar is way overvalued um, and, and began to took uh, measures to, 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 to combat that. I can see something like that happening again. I don't know. I certainly don't, you know, uh, but I just want to, you know, keep, keep that in mind as, as these uh, historic highs are, are, are tested and come into uh, focus. Now looking at the Canadian dollar, this was another one. You know, when I look at Canadian dollar futures, another the the traded forex pair uh, has the Canadian dollar in the denominator. Uh, but here we're looking at the U.S. dollar in the denominator uh, with the futures contract. I see a big base, multiple contact points up here around eighty three, uh, and you know, failed, failed breakout. You know, failed breakout uh, recently here uh, in the summer, and now it's falling back towards and retesting the shelf of former lows, going all the way back to October of last year. Remember what happened back in October of last year? Stock market bottom. Uh, stock stocks bottom. It was, it was, it was right. like September. It was September ish, or was it October? I guess it was. It was October. S and P five hundred okay. was October. Um, okay. You can argue when the the new lows peaked. Uh, I think it was months before that. I think it was July. Yeah. Anyhow. A anyway. 
Yeah, I mean, I think I think we can trade against the seventy two level, back up uh, towards seventy five fifty, um, and look for uh, uh, a violation of this uh, year long downtrend line. You know, on a break below the seventy two level, uh, we could you know see a, a decline toward sixty eight fifty for uh, the Canadian dollar futures. That's where that's where those those two uh, currencies are at the moment. Uh, but what's really caught my eye, Spencer, some of these. Wait, big... hold on, but wait, but bef wait, before we move on, I want to acknowledge Sambo's point in the chat that the uh, the uh, speculative traders are very short, some CAD right now. They so. are. They are yeah. very short, some CAD, Sambo. Great point. I brought a, uh, a Canadian dollar futures chart uh, with the positioning. Thank you for reminding me. Uh, we have a historical, well, not historical extreme, but we do have a three year. Uh, net long position for the Canadian dollar. So commercials are are getting in there and, and getting their Canadian dollars on sale right now, Spencer. Um, that's the way I view this. And, you know, we haven't seen an unwind yet. So extreme position in itself is not a signal. Uh, and it's an, it's just an indication of the environment uh, that we're in, much like uh, sentiment. Okay. So I, I like that. Not a signal, but an, an indication. That's sort of how I look. I look that's sort of how I look at fund flows too. Not a signal, indication. Right. Exactly. Yeah. It's it's just letting us yeah. know what's going on. It's 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 a, a, a again a clear indication of the environment uh, and the potential for an unwind uh, in positioning that would fuel a rally in the Canadian dollar. So something to keep in mind. Um, but what's really caught my eye as as rates have 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 started to pull back. And as um, as a dollar started to pull back, or some of the the the, the larger intermarket relationships between the major asset classes, we got commodity versus bonds. Now it recently broke to fresh decade highs. Now pulling back towards that breakout level. So bonds, believe it or not, catching a bid, catching a bid, Spencer. People apparently there's people out there that actually want to own these things, and commodities. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I was gonna, I was gonna say something about, uh, you know, bond fund flows, but then I decided not to. Uh, but you know, what's funny. I think I've always found this interesting about about the bond trade. Really, I guess in the last uh, what uh, year or two years since we've had a rising rate environment, is that like, really, like the the uh, success or failure of a bond trade I, for most people who are not like in retirement, I feel like it is in, is uh, predicated on these on the stock market, right? Like because you could have you know made four and a half percent in your bonds for the first half of the year and thought, oh, that's not so bad. But the the Nasdaq had its best one uh, first six months of the year ever, right? So you missed all right. that. Right. right so it's like the performance of the stock market you know will tell you whether your bond allocation was a good idea or not i i could be wrong but that's sort of how i look at it no yeah i think i, I think that's i think that's a great way to look at it um yeah you know when i look at bonds uh from a portfolio uh construction um standpoint um a perspective they they they're they're just they're that 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 safe haven uh risk free asset that 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 kind of, that, that that decreases the volatility of your portfolio right not um, not to and that, not totally that just risk free hasn't depends been on the, the bond case yeah that's that's what i'm saying over the past year or so yeah. uh almost two years now that it just hasn't been the case um so they've stopped falling for about a month now uh, so we'll see what happens. I think there's some trades there. I, I highlighted those yesterday. Um, I believe we talked about them on Wednesday um, when we talked about some currencies and, and bonds. But today, I, I want to focus more on commodities and just do a brief commodity roundup, highlight some major changes within the commodity space. Uh, one being energy coming off, precious metals, base metals starting to, to pick up a little bit. Um, seeing some rotation there. And then I also want to uh, look at the grains. You know, grains tend to to bottom this this time of year and put in significant lows and, and look 
and, and highlight, I should say, uh, those areas of, of uh, strength uh, within that space. So let's go ahead and get to it. Here's uh, uh, the uh, overlay chart of commodity and bonds ratio with a 30-year yield. I mean, over the past you know, decade plus, I mean, practically tick for tick. So as rates uh, begin to, to turn lower further out on the curve, it makes sense to see commodities pull back relative to bonds. And that's what we're seeing. But we're also noticing stocks begin to outperform commodities as well. We have stock versus a uh, uh, commodity ratio here with the S&P 500 and the CRB index violating a multi-year down trend line anchored from that 2020 peak when crude oil hit negative. So, uh, so, so to me, to me, what this says is stocks have been being bonds actually for um for really almost two years is what this is showing me. I mean, that's when the bond was, right? Commodities. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yes, yeah. Stocks have been beating commodities. Yeah, two years. Yeah, no? yeah, 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 yeah. Or more. Yeah, yeah. It's it's really since crude oil uh peaked. It, it, you know, it it'll be really interesting to see what happens up here around this uh this key retracement level, um and and heading into uh Q one and Q two um of next year, but. Along with this chart, I think this is one of the most important charts out there in terms of asset allocation and understanding um, what kind of regime we're in is that energy versus tech uh, ratio. Now, here we have that XLE relative to XLK, you know, pulling back to those, those 2000 uh, lows uh, and, wow. and, and pulling back to a key level. Uh, that is has received a lot of uh, action here uh, over the past year or so. I've got a zoomed in chart here. Key retracement level from the recent rally uh, off of the 2020 low to uh, last year's peak. Lots of I, action. I want to ask you. I want to. I want to yeah. ask you about charts like this. Um, mm -hmm. Do you when when you're comparing uh, in this case uh, two sectors, um, but it really could be any ratio chart. Um, do you look at, and so in this case, um, you know, we're seeing, uh, tech outperform energy that we're seeing the denominator beat the uh, numerator. Do you, but do you look at it more as like in, in this chart example, is it more the, the, the strength of tech? Is it more the weakness of energy or is that just not the way to look at it? It's not one or the other. It just. It just is. It just is both of them. Yeah, you know the way I look at it is where's money flowing? Um, where's where where are uh, uh, investors uh, being treated the best? Um, like like I, I guess like to to what should we attribute this this trend? Is it is it the energy sucks or is it that tech is amazing? Or is it neither of those things? Is it really just it's neither uh, of those things? Yeah. Again, it's okay. neither of those things. It's 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 just where where are are we being uh, uh, rewarded for for moving our money? Uh, so, okay. um, you know, it's been tech over energy for what a decade plus, almost uh, two decades, uh, almost uh, two decades. Yeah. yeah. Right. So, let's we'll say fifteen years. Um, and we're starting to see a significant reversal, uh, and, and this level, the levels that we're retesting now, you know, this is a logical area to see, uh, this relationship start to dig in, you know, energy has been on the ropes, uh, crude oil, you know, undercut that 74, uh, level recently. Now it's back above it today. It's up over $2 right now. Um, the January contracts up almost $3, uh, heading into the afternoon. So there's a lot going on in that space. That's kind of what, what I wanted to get to. Here we have a, a chart of crude oil slicing uh, through that. We were looking at that 75 between 74 level. Um, back back up above that level right now or, or, or right around this the 61.8 uh, retracement level here. Um, as we speak, did not hit oversold on the 14-day RSI. And we've talked a lot about the crack spread. You know, we're looking at the the, the margin uh, for for uh, oil refiners here. 
you know, looking at it also just looking at the participation of its distillates, uh, heating oil, gasoline, you know, it broke down recently undercutting the shelf of former highs here in, in, in these former lows, this polarity zone and starting to bounce back a little bit. But interestingly, gasoline right around this 202 oh, level. The, yeah, there, there you go. So there you go, Sambo. Yeah, revisiting, revisiting uh, it, its its lows from last fall, uh, and looking at, let's see here, bouncing higher today, bouncing higher today. Um, so the uh, January contract for gasoline is looking looking good at the moment. Um, so we're seeing a little bit of strength here. Uh, near-term strength, uh, you know, buyers are stepping in, defending these these key levels uh, for for the energy space, right? So so this gets back to what's this chart about? Is it about energy? Is it about tech? Well, we know tech's doing very well right now, right? When we're looking at the stock market, when we look at energy contracts, the remaining buoyant, right? We, you know, energy's not but falling but they apart. but they're not they're not going up, but they're not going down. Right, right. They're they're right. they're hanging in there. They're hanging in there. Right, so right. to see uh the the losing side of a ratio like this remain um resilient uh is 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 important. And that's what we're seeing. So this isn't oh you know uh you know that's the thing. This this ratio could roll over and both energy and tech could could be falling uh and, and vice versa. So this is just more again about you know, where is our money being treated the best and where are our investors moving uh, their, their their money to? Um, yeah. So with energy, with, with, with crude oil, with heating oil, with gasoline, you know, hanging in there, you know, it's just giving them the benefit of the doubt. They're, they're, they're doing their best. The, you know, not, not the, 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 the greatest opportunities right now, doesn't mean there aren't excellent opportunities within energy. There are still pockets of strength, like next gen energy, like uranium. Next gen's uh, working its way higher today. Um, it's at six forty right now. It's at six forty right now. When I zoom in, I, you know that's that would be a new uh, a new high here, uh, a new multi month high. You know, I love seeing it. That'd be like a, a new closing high, new 52-week closing high if, if it holds and closes at 640. Uh, you know, I love buying energy. You know, I'm, I'm talking my book when I talk NXC. I have a bunch of calls. Um, but I think we could also look to coal stocks as well. Uh, this, is, this is one of many that we've highlighted over the past six months. I mean, Steve's been a raging about coal oh, for yeah. for two yeah. years now um yeah i i like arch above 168 uh targeting two 230 250 um if and when we get that breakout but these are just some ideas just uh, and and I, I when i see this strength out of coal when i see the strength out of uranium i think of other uh, areas of the precious metals, uh, excuse me, the other areas of, of of the commodity space, like precious metals and base metals, that you know we pull we pull out of the ground. So here we got uh, our energy X ethanol uh, uh, custom index equally weighted, uh, overlaid with our base metal index, and we got up some industrial metals in here as well. And this is this has really been one of the the biggest themes or one of the these things on my mind, at least over the past okay. uh, year or so, is, you know, if energy starting to pick up. When is when are 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 the other when are the other pro cyclical commodities going to uh, join? Well, they're starting to now as energy comes off. So we're seeing a little bit of rotation, a little bit of rotation there, and it's funny that it just so happens that energy is rolling over relative to our equal weight based on industrial metals at a key retracement level here. And when energy- what, is all, what does all that mean? Yeah, what does all that mean? What is what? What does all that mean? What does that mean? 
it's just yeah. interesting that that you know this back in 2018 we saw a similar uh, 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 period of underperformance from energy relative to base metals uh, at this exact same level of this ratio chart. Um, similar back in what 2015, a little bit of a, a break above that level, and, and then it you know it found resistance. So this is a former level of resistance for this uh, relationship. Um, and I, you know, look, look back here. I believe it was uh, late last year or early this year. When, when this ratio undercut the shelf of former lows, going all the way back to 2014, that's when I was like, you know what? Give energy the benefit of the doubt here. I think I think we we could see a bounce. There's more to it. Now it took a little longer than I expected. We did finally get that bounce, and now it's run into a logical level to to underperform base metals, and that's exactly what we're seeing. Now, what's what's okay. interesting? Yeah. Sorry. No, I know. I I got nothing. Keep going. You got nothing. Come on. You always yeah. got something, Spencer. No, I, I'll have some. <laughs> I'll have something eventually. I'll have something eventually. Just not not right now. Well, check this out. I think this is really interesting, and I don't think I've I've paid enough attention to this chart or shared it enough. What you got copper. You know, talking about how what's going on with copper? Why can't copper catch a bid? Why can't it get going? Now it has. In the, over the past couple of weeks, what's interesting is Global Dow, G Dow, this is a top 100 blue chip international stocks. Now, there's a lot of U.S. stocks in here, but notice notice how how tightly these two are correlated. And that just goes with Dr. Copper. This is the you know the whole you know argument that you know Dr. Copper's not, got a PhD not in recently. economics. Was not that recently? Not well, recently. That's, that's that's yeah. That's yeah. the thing. You know, maybe G Dow has it right here. Maybe global equities have it right, and we're going to see, you know, copper uh, turn the page here and, and and start to catch higher. We're already seeing early signs of that. Uh, I believe three sixty three was our level here. It's holding above that level after a nasty retest, but uh, running into this year to date downward sloping trend line. Let's see what happens here. A violation above this trend line and a run back towards three ninety would be extremely constructive for uh, just for the, the commodity super cycle, for risk assets, uh, for global equities, uh, it, it would be uh, very, um, very constructive. And if copper's breaking out, I like ATI Inc. ATI, it's a $5 billion metal uh, fabrication uh, stock and it's right there challenging it's year-to-date highs, and it's challenging a key extension level that it respected. You know, you know, if it's above 46, I like ATI long towards 71. It's a good-looking chart. I really like this chart. Good-looking base here. Um, another one, Steel Dynamics. It's been one of our favorites for, for a while now. As long as it's holding above 100, I like it long. This is a $17 billion steel stock. I mentioned SLX last week. It's still on the verge of breaking out. But again, as long as STLD is above 100, I like it long towards 150, 155. And I thought I'd just give a little quick update on feeder cattle. Um, Steve pinged me yeah, the other day. He was like, what's going on yeah. with these tops and these tops and in, uh, in, in, in the cattle contracts? I know we've talked about it on the show. I haven't written about it Um for all star charts, we, we, have, we haven't talked about feeder cattle. I uh, maybe maybe like a month ago we did, uh, but I mean, not very much for good reason. I mean, I don't know. yeah, well, I, I mean, think. I think we, we got into it when we were talking about the parabolic advances recently, and yeah, yeah, yeah. um, you know, they're starting to roll over. We're starting to see feeder cattle uh break down, uh, live cattle as well. Uh, OJ is still, still uh pushing higher, you know, Coco still pushing higher. Uh, no signs of uh, a significant breakdown or, or, or any topping uh, to speak of in sugar. So there's still a lot of positive developments and, again, rotation out of energy into base metals across a commodity space. And I wanted to share a few more charts. I know we're getting – we're almost at that 30-minute mark. Uh, uh, That's all right. Here. Check, out, check out corn. Big base in corn. It's oh, been boy. falling. Is it going to stop falling? I don't know. I don't know. Chicago wheat. 
you'd expect these these markets to start start bottoming soon, right? To to, to put in a significant low. Uh, as are, we are, I think are, do do all these tops in these commodities coincide with the invasion of Ukraine? They probably do. Yes, all of them do. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, KC wheat. What? Oh man. When are they gonna? When's it gonna stop going down, Spencer? I'll tell you uh, what. Uh, yeah. Minneapolis wheat. I, I I like these charts. I still I I, I see you know decade long bases. It looks extreme, you know. But I I gotta see some action. I have to see some sort of um some sort of basing formation yeah you know, yeah um in, in the near term to to want to put a trade on uh and it, you're just not seeing it here soybeans continue to 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 roll over now you know you can see soybeans starting to potentially carve out a base here soybean oil has just been getting hit recently though not nearly as uh a, a rough a go as you saw in corn in the wheat complex <gasps> and then we have soybean meal this Going the opposite like the direction ones. of everybody yeah. else. Wow, and if you remember when we had when we had Angie on the show and I asked her about the uh the soybean derivatives, and she mentioned the 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 phrase meal is real. Mm -hmm. The idea that when when soybean meal is is driving the trend for the bean complex, that that's usually a a demand driven rally versus a, a supply driven rally. And that's really what we want. We want a demand-driven rally because those are the most fun. They're the most fun for buyers. So here I'm looking at the soybean meal futures uh, continuation contract. Now it just recently uh, ran up and hit a key retracement level around 454, and it's been uh, it's been consolidating over the past couple of weeks. You know, could could look to buy weakness as it pulls pulls back if it pulls back. Uh, and, and retest this 420 level and this shelf of former highs from the summer or buy strength on a breakout above 455. So if and when it's above 455, I like it long up towards five, 508. And get a get, get a five handle on soybean meal. And then looking at soybeans, we have a nice base here. Right, we have, a, we have a nice, you know, six month plus base, uh, uh below fourteen oh six. And I didn't bring the zoomed out chart of soybean futures. I'm sorry if you check the deck. Um, if you check the the commodity deck and uh, uh, attached to today's uh, commodity post, you'll see that that fourteen oh oh seven, fourteen ten level is a big level. Uh, uh, when we zoom out on this chart. So yeah, I, I like soybeans long above 1406, 1407, um, and, and you know, targeting 1550, 1545, um, you know, over the next, you know, I'd imagine a few months. This could go much higher, of course. This could go much, much higher uh, uh, during the, during the spring. Here's a couple other ways to play it. This is the uh, the soybean ETF SOYB. You see that 2880 level, 2087 is a big level. So I, I like SOYB long above 29, targeting 3850. And I like ADM. Supermarket, well, that support. supermarket yeah. to the world, right? As long as it's, as long as it's above... You know, Let's say 68. As long as it's above 68, I like it long towards uh towards 93, 95. Uh wasn't there one more? Yeah, yeah. This last one is I wanted to ask you about this one. I don't understand how this chart looks like that mm -hmm. when we just went through a bunch of the constituents of this fund and they do not look like this at all. They look a lot worse than this, right? So um I mean, this the, the DBA is pretty well, equally weighted. It's yeah. pretty equally weighted, right? It's uh, got a equal amounts of corn, sugar, soybeans, live cattle. Well, you could wheat, also cocoa, coffee. Right. You could also look at this chart and say, "Wow, DBA never made it back up to its 2014 highs." Wow. Well, soybeans did. Soybeans actually 
took out the 2014 yeah, highs okay. and and hit the 2012 highs. All right, KC all right, Wheat. All right. <laughs> KC wheat new all time high. I don't know. What's what, what, right, what did Minneapolis? Right. Whoa, Minneapolis wheat. All right. Yeah, I'm mostly referring to <laughs> I, I'm I'm mostly referring to the last two years though. I mean, I know, I know, I know. I'm just like like the the right side of the chart. This does not look at all like the charts that you just showed. You know, my guess, Spencer, is it has to do with the role structure, um, ah, and the way these uh-huh. things are structured. Um, and you know what? It would be great. Um. To have uh, s- some some of these guys that are more familiar with the way they structure these ETFs to come on the show and talk to us about them, we'll have to reach out to them. Um, All right. Because I I see I that. see a lot of a lot of great a lot of great opportunities in these ETFs for investors that just don't want to have to deal with trading the futures market and don't yeah, want to have to deal with it's you know. Pain trading the front month and rolling the contract and all that jazz. So, you know, just soybeans and DBA right now are just two, two uh, that I brought along, but the, 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 there are many more out there. Yeah. All right, Ian, uh, it is one o'clock. Let's get out of here. Do you have any fun plans for the weekend? I'm going to Ikea. Ooh, nice. Are you going to have lunch? <laughs> got to, man. You got to uh, get some meatballs. Yeah, perhaps, perhaps. Perhaps? I mean, yeah. There's no perhaps. perhaps. I mean, sure. It's a must. I don't know, man. JC wants me to go to this restaurant that's way out of the way. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. But I mean, you can't have some meatballs. That's true. Get some meatballs for me, please. All right. Well, yeah, I'll probably, but you can get them and like, can't you buy them like frozen, right? I thought you could like buy them like. In, I thought they had like you can get them in the cafe, but also I thought they had them like a, I thought they had like a like a, a freezer section. I could be wrong. It's been a very long time since I've been to IKEA. It's been a long uh, time so for me as I, well. I have I, I don't think I've been to I don't, I don't think I've been to IKEA in like seven years. Yeah. So I don't um, live in a in, in a place where I can actually drive yeah. to IKEA, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, hey, it's far from me too. It's like an hour away. So, uh, all right. Let's get out of here, Ian. Have a great weekend, sir. You I'll too. talk to you next week. Everyone watching, thanks so much for the questions. If you want to get more of your need to research, check out his blog. That's in the description. If you want all of his research, all the good stuff, the really good stuff, you got to get All Star Charts Premium. That link is in the description as well. Um, that's it. We'll see you guys next week. Have a good one. Yeah, thanks for watching. Great weekend, everybody.